Good evening to everybody. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Please just confirm me if you can hear me. Good evening, teacher. We can hear you. Okay, uh, good evening, sir. Welcome to this video conference that corresponds for uh, tonight class. So we are in the middle of the week. Today is Wednesday. And um, as you know, um, we have been discussing here about the, 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 the exercises that we have to complete in the platform of English Corporativo. Um, También, pues, lo he mencionado este, muchísimas veces. Perdón, disculpen que no he encendido la cámara aún. Aquí está. Bien, este, y sucede que eh, es necesario recordarles que deben completar los ejercicios de la plataforma. Eh, hay muchos, que, no sé si sea el caso de ustedes o no, pero muchos que todavía no han completado lo que es la sección 2, la sección 3 y el meter, que son pues requisitos pues, para, para ir avanzando en este proceso. Así que la invitación está hecha. Si ya lo completó usted, pues haga caso omiso de la indicación. Si no, eh, pues le invito a, a que eh, trabajemos esos ejercicios. Por ahí tienen ustedes los videos eh, con explicaciones y las indicaciones eh, pues que se muestran para cada uno de ellos. Eh, ahora, dejando ese tema aparte, nos vamos a mover a, a un ejercicio eh, que vamos a trabajar esta noche. Eh, esta noche nosotros pues, vamos a iniciar con un word search. Ok, um, solo denme un segundo. Eh, les voy a compartir el enlace. I will share to you. Sorry, I, I was speaking in Spanish. I will share to you uh, the link through um, the chat box that you have here in this uh, video conference. Just give me a second. I'm, I'm just copying and pasting the link. And uh, well, what about the 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 score that we have for la selecta como el resultado de la selecta o no ha comenzado todavía el partido 0-0 cero, 0-0 cero. Cero, cero. Sí. y que dice usted mister hay esperanza o no hay esperanza uh, no no creo que hay esperanza difícil verdad sí, desde el primer partido no, no hay esperanza <risa> no convencen no, no, no convencen para nada <risa> Así es. Bye. Um, have you ever uh, listened the word broad broadcast? Guys? Um, broadcast is a similar uh, podcast. No. It's similar uh, like a podcast, but a uh, broadcast is something different okay it's similar it's similar it's the same purpose of it but uh, there's some uh, difference between them okay Well, um, the topic for tonight is news broadcast. Los broadcasts este, son este, una especie de, de eh, en vivos. Okay? Eh, que usualmente pues, utilizan las televisoras eh, para transmitir cualquier noticia. Y este... Usualmente se suele dar en plataformas digitales. Uh, los broadcasts este, son transmisiones de video eh, 
que nosotros podemos pues ver plataformas como Facebook, como, como YouTube, eh, en las cuales, cuales están compartiendo como contenido nuevo. Les voy a compartir ahorita, este, hablando de broadcast, um, un, un word search que tiene que ver eh, con este tipo de, de contenido. En el, en el chat de esta videoconferencia ustedes ya tienen el enlace. No sé si ya lo pueden visualizar. Sí. Yes. Ok, ahí yes. tienen ustedes este Word Search. Eh, que es relacionado con esto? Ahí vamos a encontrar eh, un vocabulario pues, bastante amplio eh, de lo que usualmente nosotros podemos eh, ver en estos, en estos broadcasts. Um, también este... Este esta tema está asociado con eh, áreas, eh, perdón, este, contenidos que transmiten en televisión. Ahí vamos a ver, por ejemplo, los watch, los commercial, eh, los westerns, los movies, football eh, programs, dramas, que okay, uh, eh, people singing, soap operas, sitcoms, and late, eh, late night shows and some others, okay? There you're going to find that vocabulary. Later on, we are going to be working based on that and on those words. First of all, we have to uh, practice this through the word search. Vamos a practicar ahorita el vocabulario. Eh, vamos a resolver este, este word search y luego vamos a trabajar con eh, el vocabulario que pues, si tenemos aquí, tengo una actividad eh, después de esta. Les voy a dar en este momento 10 minutos para que lo completen. Eh, ¿Quién lo vaya completando, por favor, pues, dígame eh, o háganme saber, pues, eh, en, el, en el chat de esta videoconferencia. ¿De acuerdo? Ok, muy bien, excelente.
¿Cuántas llevan ahorita? ¿Ya irá por la mitad? La mitad. Vale, perfecto, excelente, mis. Mis Castro. Yes, teacher. I have ten. You have ten. Okay, very good. That's a good number. Mr. Rodriguez. I finished. You finished. Oh, very good. Excellent. Teacher, what the meaning of ADS? As or ADS? I don't know. Ah, perdón, <laughs> tenía muteado, le estaba diciendo. Eh, significa anuncios. Ah, ok. Thank you. I'm finished. Okay, very good, excellent. Uh, well, I think everybody finished here, and we're going to move right now to um, 
to the platform of Ingles Corporativo, as I said, please uh, don't uh, delete that link because we're going to be using it in the next activity because the activity is going to be based on that vocabulary. Uh, but uh, before going to it, uh, I need to explain you some things about uh, this topic. Just give me a second. I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, Okay, <laughs> here we have, um, so you know, this is, this is a topic that we're going to be working on, uh, news broadcast, okay? Uh, we're going to watch this video. This video, it's, uh, it says in, in, in topic, listening in the news, okay? Uh, this is a short about news, and we're going to be uh, working on the activity uh, for this video, the, the activity that we need to um, complete is uh, multiple choice questions. And as, as you notice there, we have three different questions. The first one, it said, um, where did the first study happen? There we have the three options. What happened on the first study? Where did the second study happen? The fourth one, what happened on the second study? And the number five, where did the third study happen? And the last one, what happened on the third study? So that's what we are going to be answering in this um, exercise. So please pay attention to the video and um, later on I will be asking you for the answer of it. Okay, ready? Ready. I'm ready. Excellent. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll develop skills in listening for details, develop note-taking skills, listen to news stories. We will listen to an audio program with different news stories. Your task is to take notes and identify where did the story take place, when did it happen, and what actually happened. So let's listen to the audio program at this time. A man was seriously injured on Sunday by a three and a half meter snake in a town in Thailand. It seems that the man ran over to see the snake after friends told him that it was beside one of the town's main roads. The man put it around his neck and while he and his friends were walking home, the snake squeezed more and more tightly. Luckily, the man got the snake off his neck in time. Two teenage girls who disappeared from a ship were found alive and well. The girls turned up on Friday near a small town on the northeast coast of Australia. The girls said they were visiting a friend on the ship and fell asleep in their friend's cabin. When they woke up, the ship was heading for Singapore. So they jumped off the ship, swam to shore and had to walk for several days to get to the nearest town. Early Tuesday morning in California, two police officers were chasing a car thief when they suddenly lost control of their vehicle and drove into a river. Surprisingly, the thief went back to the scene of the accident and helped rescue the officers from the river. The local police department dropped all charges against the thief for saving the officers' lives. Okay, <laughs> I was talking, I didn't notice that I was muted. And thank you, Miss uh, Miss Miss Santos. Okay, thank you for letting me know that. Um, well, uh, after we watch that video, we're going to answer all these questions. We're going to start with, with the first one. Can you uh, give me the answer for uh, the question number one? It says, where did the first study happen? In Thailand. 
Dylan, okay, very good. Number two, what happened on the first study? A man was almost strangled to death by a snake. Okay, very good. Number three, where did the second study happen? Australia. In Australia. Australia. Okay. And number four, what happened on the secondary, I mean, on the second story? Two teenagers girls who disappear were found. Okay. Two teenage girls who disappear were found. Very good. Number five, where did the third study happen? In Hollywood, California. In Hollywood. Excellent. And the number six, what happened on the third study? Two police officers were rescued by the thief they were chasing. Okay, two police officers were rescued by the thief they were chasing. Excellent. And we're going to click on and send, and then we are going to have that all these answers are correct. If you haven't finished this activity, Please just take note of it and try to develop it. Well, we're going to move to um, this, part, this part, this lesson. It says, by the end of this lesson, you will learn how to use the past perfect tense. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Uh, but before I fit, we're going to be uh, checking this video that it's about uh, uh, past perfect overview. I think you before has been working in this kind of sentence. And now we're going to re review it. Okay, just pay attention to it. And then let's start working on it. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. For example, I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. I'll explain the structure in a little bit, but the most important thing to remember about this topic is how and when to use it. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago. Um, I let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend, but uh, when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about two events that occur in the past. And it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea. It will outline what I'm trying to express. I went to a party last week. This is what took place last weekend. So that is that X, if you will, all right? But when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in a different color. Um, my friends had eaten all the food. This is the event in the circle that you see there. This happened before I got to the party. So whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and my friends ate all the food, what that means is that I went to the party and when I got there, there was food at the party and then my friends ate it. But that's not really what I want to express. What I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that and that was the fact that my friends ate the food. So that's why this is really important. You need to know when to use this particular topic. So I'm gonna continue to uh, give more examples. Now let's look at the examples on the chart. As you can see the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a uh, it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot to lock his locker and therefore this is what took place right as so we'll analyze the examples that are there 
I was working out and I have put my stuff in my locker. All right, wait, let, let's stop there for a second. I was working out is the past event. That's that X, if you will. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event. And I have put my stuff in my locker. So th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event. So it's that little blue circle that you see there. When I came back, that's that event there. That's the uh, past event. Okay. Someone had stolen my wallet. So um, I came back, but before this event, someone had stolen my wallet. All right. They were able to steal it. That's the past event. So that's that X, if you will. Because I have forgotten to lock the locker. All right. Now, that is the past perfect event, as you can see there. Let me just give one last example here. I didn't have any money because I had forgotten my wallet at home. So what I want to explain is that I didn't have any money, but I want to give a reason on why I didn't have any money. So I'm talking about two events from the past. One is that I didn't have any money. That's that X that you see there. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, highlight that in a, a, let me go ahead and highlight that in a greenish color. Second, all right. And um, before this, I want to explain that I had forgotten my wallet at home. And that's the reason why I didn't have any money, right? So as you can see, both events are, um, are related. Okay, um, so uh, as we uh, see on this video, he's discussing about the use of, of past perfect. Just let me share to you uh, um, a whiteboard. Okay, give me a second. This part, um, which we are where we are using the past perfect, um, uh, it says in the video uh, we use it when we want to refer something to something that uh, happened before it another event in the past. Okay, and there we have a, a line. Okay. He explained it, the, this line a, a, a little bit. Um, we're talking about an event in the past, okay? But uh, in order to use the past perfect tense, we have to refer to um, another event that happened before the ones that we are referring to, okay? And we have one example here where it says... Uh, so let's listen to the so audio pro. This one. Okay, we have a, a, the example that it says, I went to a party last weekend, and but when I go there, my friends has eaten the food. So if you notice here in this part, um, we can see that the, the, the main event that we're referring is that I, I went to a party, okay, weekend. So, but in order to connect that uh, sentence, uh, that, that event to another one that occurred in the past before that, we are going to use this structure. Subject plus hats plus uh, the very uh, in participle plus a complement in this case. That's what we are going to use or, or that's the way that we're going to construct sentences using the, uh, past perfect, okay? So, uh, also, on the video, we're going to find uh, some other examples, like when I came back, someone has stolen my wallet. 
So that event that we are referring there, uh, it's before the event that we are referring at the beginning. So that's mean I came back, so in a moment, but that event has happened before because it, it, it didn't occur at that moment. Now, in order to construct this kind of sentence, we, we saw there that we have the affirmative form. So, but there are some other forms that we can use. Let's check it out that. Um, just give me a second, I will delete these drawings. Okay, there. So, we have the subject. Okay, that's something that we have to add always to sentences in English. After we have the subject, we are going to add the auxiliary verb. In this case, we are going to use hat. Later on, we are going to use a past participle verb. I'm going to write it in this way. Okay, P verb or past participle verb. Later um, of this, we are going to add a complement. This complement or, or this object it can be a whatever thing, so whatever thing that we want to refer to. But it, it, with this complement, with this complement, we're going just to be adding a, more information to the sentence. Okay, so that's the structure. That's what we call affirmative structure. For in this case, uh, the past perfect. Just give me to choose another, another color here, okay? And I will write here, past perfect, okay? This is gonna be the affirmative. So if we want to write, an example of it, so we can construct a sentence using using this. Can you tell me a subject? In this case, uh, remember that the subject could be a noun or could be a pronoun. Can you tell me a subject? You. Okay, you. In this case, as we uh, as we learned before, we are going to use the auxiliary hat, okay, also we're going to use the past participle verb, which one we are going to use there? Work. Work, okay. Okay, what else? Bank. And the bank. Excellent. So there we have the first sentence. Okay, this is an example for affirmative form. Now, let's see how we can construct sentence, uh, sentences using the past perfect tense in um, negative form. All right, I'm going to use another color here. Okay, negative form. So for this structure, we're going to use also the subject, okay? Subject class, in this case, we're going to use the auxiliary verb, hat, but also in this part, this is the change, that we're, the, change, the change that we are going to be given to this structure because we're going to be using an adverb. This adverb is the ones that we use to uh, modify the verb and try and, and use it as negative. In this case, we're going to be using not, okay? Subject plus have plus not. Also, we're going to be using the past participle verb. 
class a complement. Okay, there we have. Now, uh, using this structure, any of you can uh, write or tell me a, a subject, I mean, uh, an example of this uh, negative form. So we're going to start with the subject. Okay. I have been. Ah, okay. I. I have I haven't. I had. No, in this case, we cannot construct that word because it's okay. in past. Because it's in past, yeah, just for that reason. I had. Not. I had not. not. I had not. Been. Working. Okay, oh. there is a mistake here. Um, and let's see why, because we are using, okay. we are using working with ING. Yes. This is another type of tense. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we have to change the word. I have, I have not been. I had not. Been. Been. Uh, um, uh, listen, listen music. Listen in music. That's no, what. Listen, listen, listen to music. Uh, yes. No, no. Okay. The thing, okay, there is a mistake there because uh, if we're going to use the verb listen, um, okay, it has to be in, in, in with the ing form. Okay, I had not been at home. Okay, in that way we can do it at home. Okay, I had not been at home. Excellent. So there we have an example of what we know as past perfect tense using negative form. Okay, I had not been at home. So the same in, in, as, as we noticed in, in the previous uh, tenses that we we're discussing yesterday, it would also have the interrogative form. We change the uh, color in order to write down here. Okay. I, feel, uh, I mean, interrogative. Interrogative form. Um, this happened, this phenomenon happened in almost all tenses. Uh, we're going to take the affirmative sentence and we, what we're going to do in order to uh, create interrogative sentences is to switch the subject with the auxiliary verb. Instead of writing uh, the subject at the, at the beginning, we're going to be using the auxiliary verb hat. Okay, later on, we're using Subject as as participle verb as plus a complement. Okay, just just give me a second. I'm going to plug in my my computer. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. So then we have the structure of um, the past perfect tense in, in, inter in their interrogative form. So can you tell me now, can you construct uh, a sentence using this, this form? 
Have you been working? Have you been working? Let's see. So, uh, previously, we were discussing about this type of stance. In the case of past perfect, uh, we don't have to watch uh, a verb with the ing because the, the, if we add the ing form, we are using the uh, the past. Uh, the in this case, the, the, it, we it's no a. Uh, it's not okay. correct use because we are going, we are using, sorry, another tense. Okay. okay. So. Have you been work? Work, it's also keeping the same word. You have to add a compliment. Instead of using a verb, you can use a compliment. Have you been watch TV? Have. Okay, we're going to use this. You bring. We cannot use, remember, we cannot use a verb with the ing form. Have you been? Do not use the continuous form of the verb because it's no need in this, in the, in this structure. Have you been at the home? Okay. Have you been at home? We are going, oh, sorry, I forgot to, to add this because this is something important in this kind of um, no. form. We have also, question we need mark. to add always, oh, sorry, the question mark at the end So in this, in this case. We're going to use hat plus subject plus past participle verb plus the complement plus the question mark. So um, the example that we have here is, have you been at home? Had you been at home? So, but there, in this type of sentence, as you can see, uh, when we use it, needs, um, it's neither, Another tense in order to complement the meaning, in order to complement what the, the, the idea we want to express using uh, this structure. Why? Because if you ask, have you been at home? Okay, the, if we translate this into Spanish, it could be like, um, habías estado en casa? Si, si observamos ahí, la idea pues sigue estando en el aire. ¿Por qué la pregunta? ¿Sí? No, no complementa. Ahora, ¿qué debemos hacer nosotros en este caso? Para complementar la idea de esta estructura, nosotros vamos eh, a utilizar, eh, en, en, en algunos casos, eh, un evento este, en pasado haciendo referencia a esto. Podríamos utilizar nosotros, por ejemplo, el eh, pasado progresivo, ¿ok?, Podríamos utilizar eh, también el pasado simple, ¿sí? Para complementarlo. Podrían eh, indicarme ustedes, eh, vamos a completar primero esta parte de, del interrogativo, la oración interrogativa, que es la que estamos discutiendo ahorita. Eh, Podrían indicarme ustedes un evento en pasado, utilizando cualquiera de esas dos formas, pasado simple o pasado este, continuo. Last night. No, eh, eh, quedaría, eh, siempre queda en el aire como la, la idea de lo que nosotros queremos preguntar. Eh, en español, para dar una idea, ¿habías, eh, o, o, ¿habías estado en casa tú cuando? ¿Cuándo? Okay, could be in that way. We're going to use this. Have you been at home when it started raining?
Okay. Vaya, si lo traducimos al español, toda esta estructura. Eh, estamos en casa cuando comenzó a llover. Aquí, como ya estamos este, construyendo toda la idea de la oración, eh, ya esta parte tiene sentido, ¿sí? Porque se complementa con el evento en pasado este, que nosotros le estamos adhiriendo a esta oración, ¿sí? A esto se le conoce como este, oraciones eh, compuestas en español, ¿sí? Porque estamos utilizando los dos. Ahora bien, una de ellas, en este caso, este, el, la, el pasado este, perfecto, depende de la oración que vamos a utilizar, ya sea en este caso, eh, el pasado simple o el pasado continuo. ¿sí? Siempre va a depender el pasado perfecto con este, el, el, del, perdón, del pasado simple o el pasado continuo para crear este, lo que es la idea completa de esta oración. Ahora bien, para esta, esta estructura así, nosotros el signo de interrogación no lo vamos a mantener en el pasado perfecto, sino que lo vamos a trasladar al final. ¿sí? Vamos a colocar nosotros el signo de interrogación y vamos a eliminar de este. El signo de interrogación. Have you been at home when it started raining? Estabas en casa cuando inició a llover. Ahora bien, regresemos eh, a la plataforma. Por aquí tenemos nosotros eh, un video en el cual este, vamos a estar eh, viendo las estructuras del eh, pasado perfecto siempre, pero en sus formas positiva y en su forma negativa, que es lo que hemos estado viendo ahora y lo que les he estado explicando yo este, en, en este momento. Eh, de igual forma lo vamos a ver pues, para que... Eh, nosotros pues podamos obtener más información al respecto y si omitimos algo pues lo vamos a descubrir aquí ¿de acuerdo? pueden visualizar mi pantalla ¿sí? ¿no? sí yeah. de acuerdo ok let, let's start watching this video Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. We use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we. Uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here. And then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I mentioned that 
um, we, the, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're going to have some sort of subject, so we're going to say someone, all right? And I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the auxiliary verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat, and then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right? And the past participle of that verb it's stolen, okay? So someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try to see if I can if I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, so uh, I should color this maybe blue, the same thing as it's in red, the auxiliary verb is in red, and then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence uh, that we want to emphasize. So let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I verb have the past participle of the verb forget it's forgotten and then the complement becomes to lock the locker now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart so I'm gonna make those and I'm gonna try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them so let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences, negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right. So I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use hadn't. All right. So let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here, just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So. Uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb, and in this case, because it's a negative, then we use the past participle of that verb. Um, so in this case, uh, it's locked, the past participle of that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following. So let me go that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't be really work at, at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to Practice these concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure, and practice making negative statements. You can follow this structure. Sure, your microphone. Okay, sorry. Uh, 
I didn't notice that I was muted. So I was telling you that um, there we have the, the affirmative statements and narrative statements. In this case, he called it positive statement is the same that the affirmative statements that we were discussing previously. And uh, because of the time, we are going to stop right now. It's supposed that we're going. It's supposed that we're going to uh, work in a in an activity, uh, but we are going to move the activity for tomorrow. That means that we're going to start with this activity uh, tomorrow's class. Um, so, uh, what you you won't have like a homework for tonight. Uh, but I want you to, uh, uh, what I want to uh, give you is just a recommendation in order you can fulfill the requirements for Inglés Corporativo, because as you know, it's mandatory you can finish all the exercises, exercises there in, in the platform. Um, and they have to be asking us, uh, hey, tell them that they need to finish the 80% of the exercises on the platform in order to get the certification. Just I want to reply that information to you and uh, that's all, okay? So, do you have any question? If you don't have any question, uh, I will finish the video conference right now. No, we don't, you don't have questions. Okay. No questions. So, okay, very good. So, uh, we're going to see us tomorrow uh, at the same schedule, eight o'clock. Please be on time. And that's been all. Okay. Yeah. Have a good we'll have night class and tomorrow. blessings. Sorry. Good night. We'll have class tomorrow. We're tomorrow. going to have classes tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, Thursday. Oh, let me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we won't have classes, but on Friday. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay, very good. So, blessing for all of you. See you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Good night. 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 Good night.